Hi. Final in part nine of Rika two. This is Shihan Zaini, your archery coach and director of Who Archery Mission, as well as the director for the Coaches Committee, Archery Association of India. You are in the level one Rika bow specialization workshop of the Who Archery Mission and the Archery Association of Tamil Nadu (TA18). Well. This is going to be the last theory section in the nine section lectures on uh, recurve bow tune. In this section, we will deal. We will go through fine tune tuning in the bracing height. We will look at crooked knots. We will look at knock indexing. We will also look into the aspects of loose or damaged fletching. Yes. We will also look at loose points and inserts and uh, arrow weight. We have lots to cover in the last uh, section today. We will also be identifying specific arrow problems. Now, let's move on to the final lecture in the nine-part lecture series of recurve. Uh, Archery. Finding the correct brace height for your bow can, in many cases, greatly improve consistency and grooming and should be considered as a fine tuning adjustment. What I'm going to tell you in the, in the, in the chart shows the maximum range of brace height for most modern recurve Olympic bows. What I'm going to tell you is the maximum range right, of brace height. And the low end for the range and somewhere in between is most likely where your final brace height will end up between the lower range and the upper range changes within the brace height ranges show can affect show can affect arrow spine as much as changing the arrow point and the or insert weight approximately 20 grains. Remember, it is best to shoot your bow at its smoothest and quietest setting. The chart that I will be telling you shows the range wide enough to create a between size arrow spot. Maximum recommended brace height for most competition recurve compound bows. I'm telling by bow length. For a 64 length bow, it is 19.7 centimeters to 22.9 centimeters. For a 66, it is 20.3 centimeters to 23.5 centimeters. For a 68 length, it is 21.0 centimeters to 24.1 centimeters. For 70 meters, it is 21.6 centimeters to 24. Please correct this place. 24.8 centimeters. I was not wrong when I was talking in the last lecture. It is 24.8 centimeters maximum for 70 uh, height bows. Brace height is a fine tuning adjustment and should be done in small increments. When working through the fine tuning process, try making a small brace height adjustment to see how it affects grouping. If the string has very few twists, it will take more turns to achieve a specific change. If the string has numerous twists, then if it has numerous twists, make adjustments in very small increments of 1 by 16 of an inch at a time and see how the groups are affected and note any changes in the sound and feel of the bow when you're shooting it. If the string has many twists, it will take only one or two turns to achieve the 1 by 16 inch brace height change. If the string has very few twists, it may take three or more twists to achieve the same result. Now, let's go to identifying specific arrow problems. You may find an arrow that does not group well with the other arrows in the set. Examine it before you discard the arrow or retire it from competition. Sometimes a problem is very easily identified and corrected and other problems 
are not so evident. If a shaft is cracked or dented, it should be discarded. Don't ever use it. Some arrows may seem fine, but they have problems that are not obvious and can cause the arrow to group poorly. The following list that I'm going to give you identifies common arrow problems, which may cause inconsistent or a stray impact. Number one, arrow straightness. Arrows must be straight for tight grouping. Straightness should be within 0.004 inch or better for best grouping. This also depends where the bend is located. A slight bend near the knock end of the shaft may cause a greater impact variation than a larger bend that is over the full length of the arrow shaft. Now, crooked knocks. There are several ways to check knock straightness, including commercially available knock gauges and special arrow spinning wheels. Make sure the knocks are absolutely straight. Crooked knocks can cause severe, I repeat, severe accuracy problems. So be very, very careful about your knock straightness. Now let's go down to this chapter called knock indexing. It is possible that one knock in the set may be turned more than the others. A clearance problem results if the knock is rotated too far, forcing the fletching in the arrow rest or cushion plunger on the or, 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 uh, into the arrow rest or cushion plunger. It hits the arrow rest or the cushion plunger when shot. Make sure that all knocks are indexed the same and that the spacing between the two clearance fletches, the two waves that clear past the arrow rest and cushion plunger is the same. When fetching your arrows, it is common for some fletch to be spaced closer than the others on the shaft. Always choose the two waves that are furthest apart to use as a clearance fletch, which clears the arrow rest or the plunger. Now, let's discuss loose or damaged fletching. Veins that are not properly fixed or have been damaged. Fletching that is slightly damaged will not usually affect arrow grouping. But if the fletching becomes even slightly detached from the shaft, the arrow will not group with the others. The arrow may not even hit the target past 30 meters. In the case of hard plastic waves, if the rear of any vein is bent, it will also cause a change in the impact of the arrow on the target face. Now let's move to loose points or inserts. The heads are inserts which are loose in an arrow shaft. Many archers are not aware of this potential problem. Points must be properly installed with good hot milk adhesive or epoxy depending on the shaft material. Carefully follow the instructions of the point insert installation from the arrow manufacturer. Most of the times the, the dealer or the arrow manufacturer or the, 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 the head manufacturer would add up some uh, uh, hot melt glue in the packet that they give you. Some brands of hot melt glue are often brittle and may fracture when the arrow impacts hard target buttress materials. If the cement fractures or the point is improperly installed, it can result in a separation between the point insert and the shaft. When separation occurs and the arrow is shot, the separation of the bond between the shaft and the point can cause the point to vibrate against the shaft wall, affecting the arrow's natural frequency of vibration and arrow accuracy. Again, remember the frequency that I talked about. It will affect the frequency or the tuning of the arrow. To test for point vibration, hold the arrow a few inches below the fletching, below the fletching, and lightly tap the point on a carpet or grass on the floor. If you hear a buzzing sound, the point insert is probably loose. Heat and pull out the point insert and properly reinstall. 
You may also get the same buzzing sound if you tap the arrow against the string before loading. Now arrow weight. Arrow weight is an important consideration for tournament competitive archers or advanced archers, elite archers and should be checked every time. If you have arrows that consistently impact a little high or low of your group, it may be due to a slight weight variation. A match set of arrows should have no more than a three grain spread between the heaviest and lightest arrows in the set. Top tournament or competitive elite archers frequently match the arrows to one grain or less. In conclusion, don't be afraid to make tuning adjustments as it is the best way to learn how you and your equipment interact. You will learn a lot in the process. And as long as the, as the equipment is well documented, you can always go back to the original settings. Well, so much for the nine long lectures on recurve tuning. This actually brings an end to the nine-part series on recurve bow tuning theory. Let's break up here. Please understand, you have learned everything about recurve tuning. So the lecture is loaded with information, it's not going to get into your head that easily. But if you have already done and you've understood everything, you must certainly be a genius in archery, a genius coach in archery. Please listen to the lecture over and over again in your headphones. This will truly help you understand what I have said. Keep repeating till you are thorough with it. I will be explaining every part of this lecture in simple detail in several spread, sessions spread all through the year with many, many more lectures, probably in your own language, in Tamil or Hindi, that you can easily grasp. Till you have completely understood it and it has sunk into your head and your heart, I will keep on teaching. Now please remember, as a coach, you need to know how to tune, you need to know how to shoot, you need to know how to use the bow, the recurve bow and arrow. Only then you will be able to tune it, you will be able to teach your archers. So as a level 1 archery coach, please, please, please buy a recurve bow and start shooting in it, learn how to tune it and then you can teach your archers. Have an amazing day. This brings to a finale, the ninth portion, the ninth part series on recurve tuning. Have an amazing day. We will tell you move on to the next section and I will meet you in the practical sessions at the venue. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Bye. This is Who.